And one of the things that they, that the Heritage Foundation, and, and, and this seems to be your work, uh, I would assume, is that there's right now, and in, in counting, 1,285 cases of proven voter fraud. Uh, That's and, right. And, 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 okay, so wh- how far does that date back to? Uh, look, we only put this together in the last couple of years, and a lot of media people have been mistakenly saying, oh, well, this is the only voter fraud that's ever occurred in the U.S. They say, no. they say that all the time, right? Like, it's, oh, yeah. it's, oh, it's just that one. And you show, show them <laughs> another one. Oh, just that one. Well, I mean, like, what, what, what is their limit? I always wondered that. No, that's totally wrong. This is, this, the database very carefully says, this is a sampling of cases. I, I don't have the resources to go through and research and do a comprehensive listing of all the voter fraud cases across the country. This is this is really more recent cases in the last 10 or 20 years. And again, we don't have every case in the country. Uh, but what this database does is it shows all the different ways election fraud uh, it, it is committed. And unfortunately for the state of Texas, we have page after page after page of uh, voter fraud prosecutions, everything from uh, impersonation fraud at the polls to the fraudulent use of absentee ballots to ineligible voting by, for example, people who are not U.S. citizens. So so you said Texas, let's use Texas Texas as an example, because I view Texas as a, a, you know, having pretty decent election laws. We have to show our ID seems to me to be pretty secure. So is the reason we have all these cases because our system has actual good safeguards on it and we can actually discover voter fraud or is it just more prevalent there? Like, you know, are we just not discovering it in other states where it's just easier to to vote? No voter ID. Yes, that that is exactly uh, one of the reasons for, you know, whenever I get arguments from people um, saying, oh, there's no voter fraud in my state. Well, I look at the state and say, yeah, well, how would you you got in place to detect it? Right. And a great example of that, of course, is the state of New York, which has no voter ID requirement. Um, So it's very easy there to uh, commit fraud and get away with it. New York also, for example, uh, doesn't do anything to compare its voter registration list with that of other states. So they can't catch uh, the snowbirds, for example, people who live in New York, but also spend a lot of time or have a second home in Florida who illegally uh, register and vote in, in both places. They just don't don't seem to be interested in catching the fraud that's occurring. Yeah. And, and this list of twelve hundred cases, these are proven. You know, these are these are real cases. These aren't suspected right. cases. These, these aren't situations that seem a little bit suspicious because i hear about those things all the time as well um people people will send them to me hey look my neighbor got a, a multiple ballots sent to their right. house uh you know i i, I know of, of this particular location where there's 85 people registered to vote you know people will show that kind of stuff all the time but but that's not even the kind of things you're including in this list this list is i'm going to read a few examples if you don't mind so sure. May 2020, a West Virginia mail carrier fraud where a Pendleton County mail carrier is charged with attemption, attempted election fraud. Uh, DOJ announced a man has been charged with fraud. According to U.S. Attorney, a U.S. Attorney Bill Powell, the mail carrier held a Postal Service contract to deliver mail and alleges that the Pendleton County clerk received eight 2020 primary election COVID-19 mail and absentee request forms to the courthouse in April that appeared to have had the voters party ballot requests altered. Okay, that, that's just one example. These are the kind of things that we're seeing in here. Another one from West Virginia in May, um, duplicative voting in New Hampshire and Massachusetts in December of 2019. Uh, two people were found guilty of duplicative, du- duplicate voting, one by absentee ballot, and then, and then in person in Massachusetts, so they were voting twice. And again, I think a lot of people look at this stuff, like, then they say, oh my God, what is the big deal? You know, so what is the big deal? I mean, if, if it's just if it's just this this one little example, I mean, does that really hurt us? Well, yeah, it does. Uh, you know, look, if you look at the database, you'll find that some of the cases are people where it's just it's just one individual uh, stealing a, a vote. You know, like the student we added just recently who lives in Massachusetts, but goes to school at University of New Hampshire and illegally voted in both states. Um, but on the other hand. We have other cases where, uh, well, for example, uh, Virginia, which is where I live, uh, one of the cases in our database is the mayor of a small town who, along with 14 other people, 
were all convicted of fraud, um, including stealing absentee ballots with the intention of rigging the election. And sometimes the fraud is big enough. Yeah, sometimes you're just stealing one person's vote, but other times they're changing the outcome uh, of elections.